It's why... Smile on your face, dang it. We're married and happy. We want people to be like us. According to Gallup, 86% of never married Americans ages 18 to 34 want to get married. In spite of this, over half of the adult population in America today is not married. And when you look at millennials specifically, the vast majority of them are not married, 73% to be exact. So what this means is this, nearly nine out of 10 singles in their 20s who want to be married and conceivably could be married are not married despite their desires. Nine out of 10. So why is that and why should it matter to you? That's what we're gonna talk about today on Love Ed with Julie and MJ. Well, for starters, if you're in that group of never marrieds that would like to get married, you can take comfort in the fact that you are not alone. Not by a long shot. That's part of the problem. But even if you're not sure you want to be married, the stats should still matter to you because what they indicate is that our culture has a marriage crisis. No, I am not saying that it's a crisis that you aren't married. Although your Aunt Lulu may highly disagree, <laughs> I'm saying that a culture where over half the adult population is not married is a crisis, and here's why. For starters, even though fewer and fewer millennials are getting married, they're still having babies. Yeah, in fact, almost 60% of children born today are born outside of marriage. And of course, as has been the case for some time, those that do get married, those marriages don't always last. Yeah, indeed, the majority of sources put the divorce rate around 50%, but even the most optimistic estimates show one in three marriages ending in divorce. But maybe you're thinking, well, what's the big deal? You know, the big deal is this. It is an anthropological reality across time and cultures that strong marriages are the best way to build strong families, which are essential to building strong communities. But Jules, let's break that down into how that's supposed to work. Well, for starters, it's in the security of a strong marriage that children can be nurtured and disciplined into becoming confident, capable adults. And then it is in the commitment of marriage where mature adults can care for one another's needs until due to aging, they're no longer able to do so. At which point their children can take the responsibility and privilege of taking care of their parents as they age. I realize what we just described sounds quaint and old fashioned, but the fact remains that if there are not healthy families to care for the needs of each individual in a culture, then we have to come up with another way of doing that. And so far, as we've said, Throughout history, no one's really come up with that other way. Usually the second choice is the government either trying or having to replace the family. Um, do, do we really want to talk about that <laughs> other option right now? Is this the time? Well, we know firsthand from adopting our two boys through the state foster care system, what a burden broken families mm. can put on the state. The boys we fostered for two years before we could adopt them had a new caseworker every six months. They just kept on quitting. It was just each caseworker had too many kids from too many families with too many complex problems for the state to really be able to solve that. It's simple math. It's far easier for a mother and father to understand and care for the needs of their own children who they have known since birth than it is for a caseworker, no matter how well-meaning and warm-hearted, to care for 50 plus children they only know through a case file. So that's why the divorce epidemic should matter to you whether you're interested in getting married or not. In other words, marriage may not be for you or for someone you know and love, but it is most definitely for our culture. Or any culture that wants to thrive. <laughs> Let's put some perspective on this marriage crisis thing. Imagine uh, we're talking about the economy. Okay. Imagine half of the adult population unemployed. That would be a bad economy. And the impact would be direct and immediate. But the fallout of the marriage crisis is not as direct as that. And it's not as immediate, but it is just as real and just as significant. 
And research shows time and time again the impact of divorce and out of wedlock childbirth on children specifically and on society as a whole. So though half of all adults being single may not seem as alarming as half of all adults being unemployed, it is a crisis for our culture. And it's a crisis that Future Marriage University has been called to address. It's why we have the big, holy, audacious goal of changing the mind of our culture about the biblical meaning, purpose, and significance of marriage. And it's that desire that drives us to answer our call to empower the wise individual to prepare for their future marriage like a successful career. Which means intentionally, intelligently, and in advance. We want to help you and those you know and love to prepare for relational success when it counts. Which is before you fall in love. So you can be part of the answer to the marriage crisis in our culture. Of course, you can't go off and get married on your own. I, I realize it still takes two. No, but you can prepare for relational success on your own. Indeed, start with one of the Love Ed series for which you will find a link at the end of this video. And invite a friend or a small group to join you. And then join us again next Next week for another episode of Love Ed with Julie and MJ. Love with Julie and MJ. Wait, wait, wait. Jump it in the pit. But now we're going to nail it. This is us nailing it.